Are your lab results optimal or are they just normal? Pull out your lab results and let's compare. Hey everyone, TRT Veteran. If you're new here, I'm not a doctor or a bodybuilder. I'm just a normal dad and a normal guy sharing my experience with hormone replacement. Usually the term normal sounds good. When you have your labs checked and your doctor says your labs are all good, you're good to go, well, that should be a red flag because there's a big difference between normal and optimal. Ideally, the normal range that labs choose should go off of healthy people in your area that are not overweight and do not have any health conditions. But that is just not how it's done. So how is the normal range actually decided? They take a wide group of people and then they shave off a small percent on the low end and a small percent on the high end. And that's how you get your normal range. An optimal range is a much smaller number that people should strive for. So the normal range is what 95% of people fall into. An optimal range is obviously a significantly smaller percentage that you want to strive to be in to feel your best. A lot of doctors will see your lab results and see that you're normal and say you're good to go. But what happens if you're only one or two points into that normal range? Surely you need some attention. So some people may feel great in the normal range, but others probably not so great. That's why it's important to strive for those optimal numbers. It's very important to find and have a doctor that strives for those optimal numbers. But not only optimal numbers, but also that doctor needs to be able to listen to how their patient feels and adapt to their needs. So let's get into some specifics. The first one is obviously your total testosterone. The best time to have that checked is early in the morning. That is when your levels are at the highest. So being in the United States, Quest and LabCorp are two major lab companies that many people use. With Quest, they say the normal range is 250 to 1100 for your total testosterone. LabCorp says 264 to 916 is normal. Now with a hormone specialist, they generally strive to get you optimal, which is closer to the 1000 range. However, at a minimum, they want you in the 700s. Back when I was 18 and in the Marines, my total testosterone was in the 1000s. However, now, even on testosterone replacement therapy, I'm lucky to get into the 700s. The next is your free T. Now, this one gets very frustrating depending on who you are going through for your lab work. If you've had to do your labs in both places, like my wife and I, you might be frustrated with your results. LabCorp says the normal range for free testosterone in men is 8 to 25 pgml, where Quest says 35 to 155 pgml. Now you'll notice that these are very different ranges, but if you look at how they actually do the measurement, they're very similar. We asked our hormone specialist at Matrix Hormones about this, and he said, and I quote, Quest explanation of that is it's the same measurement system, but a different process of range scale. Basically, if you have to look at a percentage of those two numbers when you're matching them, so this makes it very confusing for the normal person to decipher their free T. So just know, either way, you want your free testosterone on the higher end of normal. SHBG is next. So with your SHBG, you want to make sure that your numbers are actually on the lower end of normal. And normal range is 16.5 to 55.9. Now, if it ends up getting too high, that can make your testosterone not usable in your body. For your estrogen, now we all know how controversial this is. People can be totally different sides of the spectrum on this one. Labs will say 7.6 to 42.6 pgml is normal. Every guy is different with their estrogen and how they feel. So with me, I monitor symptoms. Once I hit 85, that's when I consulted with my doctor and I began to treat for it. Now for PSA, your prostate specific antigen, the lower the number, typically the better you are. 
as that number creeps up, you're more likely to have prostate cancer. Now there are many things that can affect your PSA, such as the size of the prostate or your age. Labs say normal for PSA is zero to four. So with the lower you are, the least likely you are to have prostate cancer. With me being at a 0.6, that makes me extremely less likely to develop prostate cancer later down the road. With your LH, lab normal range is 1.7 to 8.6 IUML. Too low of LH may mean you have a pituitary gland issue. And if you got too high of LH, that might mean that your testes aren't responding. With your FSH, normal range is 1.5 to 12.4 IUML. If your FSH is above a seven, that puts you at a greater risk of an abnormal semen analysis. Now these should be tested before you start testosterone because if you don't get them tested until after you've started injecting your testosterone, that's gonna cause your LH and FSH to be suppressed by the injected testosterone. So you will not have as accurate of a reading. Next is prolactin. Labs say a normal range is four to 15. Some guys could feel just fine at any number in that range. However, from my personal experience, I prefer to be on the lower end of that range. And guys, I'm talking about your erection quality. Here's some more information on additional tests that you may want to include in your labs. Your vitamin D labs, the normal range says 30 to 100 ng ml. 30 is the absolute low end you should be at, but it's best to strive for anywhere from 50 to 75. B12 is another one of those that has a very crazy normal range. Your normal range for a B12 test should be between a 232 and a 1245 PG ML. That's an extremely wide range. And for me, my hormone specialist wanted me to keep it on the top side of that normal range. However, I'm actually sitting at a 1650 and I'm feeling good. My hormone specialist is good with that number. And so that's how we're gonna try to keep it. Your thyroid levels are very important and might be something that you wanna add onto your labs. That is how my wife and I discovered that we have thyroid issues, but it's way too much to cover right now. So we're going to cover the thyroid test you may want to run in a later video. Of course, there's many other tests that you may want to run for your treatment. And if you're looking for some good ideas, head over to discountlabs.com. I'll throw that link down in the description box. They've got a very wide variety of different tests. It's super easy to navigate the website. And as always, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do so. And then head on over to our Facebook group, TRT Veteran. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at TRT Veteran.